There are a few different techniques for creating and manipulating lists within PD. I've got a list that consists of the notes of a C major chord, that's 60, 64, and 67, and a D major chord, 62, 66, and 69. I'm unpacking those into a make note, so essentially I'm making a big chord. Now, I can use the ZL object as part of the Zexy library to spl uh, slice this list in half at a particular index. So I'll type slice and then the index I want to start at. So this is index 1, 2, 3. Or actually I should say 0, 1, 2 and then 3. And so if I type slice 3 and put that between the list and unpack out of the left inlet will be the first three values and out of the right inlet will be the last three values, since there's six total. So I'll send the right inlet into unpack, and I get the D major chord. If I send the left inlet, I get C major. So that's a, a good way to um, take a list and route it in components. Now, if I change the creation argument to two, then I'll be sending out the left outlet, the first two values, the right outlet, the next four, or if the list was larger, actually all of the values after that. Let's take a listen. Oh, I need to reinitialize this. Let's try it again. This is the one I want. Okay. And if I spell this backwards, E-C-I-L-S, then I'm going to count from the end. So it'll take 66 and 69 and spit that out the right outlet and then the first four values or anything before that out the left outlet. There's actually a lot of different objects um, in the ZL library for manipulating lists. Uh, there's ways to group items in lists. That's ZL group. Uh, there's ways to rotate around objects. It's a pretty useful library, of course. As with anything, you just right-click and choose Help, and you'll get the Help window, and you can investigate what the additional objects are. Now, when you create a list, typically you'll use Pack, or not typically, you always use Pack, and the list will be fired only when the leftmost inlet is banged. So here I've got Pack, with three number atoms, create a bang, and this list won't be fired until data is received in the leftmost outlet. We can remedy this uh, by using an object called Bondo. And then the creation argument is the total number of inlets and outlets. So we'll say three. What Bondo is going to do is synchronize all of the inlets to the outlets. And it will fire if any of the inlets are received. So we'll use it between pack and the number atoms. So now you see if I change any of the items, then a list is sent. So this is really helpful if you're formatting lists that have, let's say, uh, parameters for x, y, position, or other, um, other means of organizing data into a list, and only one of those parameters changes, but you need for the list to be fired again. And it's also useful with the expression object. For example, if I create expression, let's see, dollar sign, f, dollar sign, F1 plus dollar sign F2 plus dollar sign F3, uh, F3, semicolon, and the next line, dollar sign F2 plus dollar sign F3. This particular equation is only going to fire if the leftmost inlet is fired. What we really want here is the second line, although we can get the information for the first line too. And we'll use Bondo to synchronize all of the bangs into the expression argument. So 
when F2 or F3 is received, we'll actually get the equation. We don't have to fire some sort of bang to um, F1. Bondo will do it for us. And we'll take these three values. Okay, so if I move the leftmost one, I get the equation, but F2 and F3 haven't been banged yet. But now you see that I'm actually getting the equation for F2 and F3 because Bondo is automatically banging the first outlet. So the ZL objects and Bondo are really uh, helpful for manipulating lists. And as we look at other uh, functions within PD, we'll pop in a few other really useful objects for list manipulation and parsing.